Hello and welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna be venturing into the land of voiceless Facebook food tutorials. You've seen them, they feature top-down shots, they have a lot of fast, sped up, pouring and mixing, and no taste tests to even validate whether or not making these really, really long recipes is worth it. One recipe in particular that I saw on my feed the other day caught my attention. Transparent potato chips. This thing is pretty darn viral, and I understand the intrigue. How can potato chips possibly be transparent? But after looking at the recipe briefly, it seems like they basically soak potatoes in a bowl of water to get the taste, and use that water to make transparent chips. And they do look cool, but the question the question I have before this video auto plays again is how do they taste? We're gonna whip up a batch of these transparent potato chips and try them out. All right, let's start cooking. Okay, to start off, we're gonna get to what is called like a potato stock, which is basically like that, like potato bath. So we're gonna make our potato bath house first by taking the potatoes, cleaning these off, and then slicing a two inch cut into each potato. The idea is that I have a little bit of a hole in these guys, so then when we bake them, the potato juices can come out. We're making like potato tea bags in some ways. So now we're gonna take these potatoes and put them into this mixing bowl, and then we're basically going to lather them in oil. You don't have to massage them, but I did. All right, so now I'm going to lay them out onto this baking sheet, and then salt them. I feel like they're gonna end up being like salt delivery devices. Oh my God. <laughs> So these potatoes are extremely thoroughly salted. The next step now is to bake the potatoes. So once you've got the potatoes baked and the bath water heated, you start dunking them in to let them marinate. Is marinate the word, would you say? Bask, like sunbathe, but in hot water. Regardless, we're gonna let them sit in there for two hours and then we'll have our potato stock. All right, so it's two hours later. Taking that off, woo, that is steeped. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna strain this potato stock. So all we have left over is like that potato water. And then we're gonna let that cool overnight so that we can make our glass or transparent chips tomorrow. -na -na. -na -na. -na -na. Is there room in the fridge? Yes, I'm putting it here underneath the open cat food. But one benefit from this recipe though is bonus potatoes. Well, this is like a sort of soggy potato. So it is the next morning. Our potato stock is chilled. We're gonna take that out, mix it with some cornstarch, and that's gonna make our potato gel. It does smell like taters, man. I don't think you're ready for potato jelly. I don't think you're ready for potato jelly. Yeah, that looks like troll. That, that does not look like something you like to eat. We're gonna pour the gel into a squirt bottle to start prepping our chips. This is how we're gonna form our chips. We're just gonna shoot them out. That looks like a teardrop, man. That looks like it could become a translucent chip, I gotta be honest. And basically, you just keep squirting until you're out of juice. Turns out, we had a lot of juice, so we ended up making a lot of chips. I am curious, though. I got like a little droplet over here. I wanna see what it tastes like. It doesn't taste like a lot. It's kinda like the aftertaste of potato. After filling up this first baking sheet, we still had a lot left. And so for our second batch, we decided to try some fun shapes. Yeah, the smiley face chips. This guy's a little goofy looking. How do I make a Pringle? So after our second batch, we still had some gel left. So I decided to use the rest to make a giant chip. I gotta get the parchment paper to weigh down just a little bit. The key is here is to make sure that we use all of it, but also that we don't run out of it short of a full chip. It's like Chip Pangea. You know, it's like the predecessor of all chips. One chip to rule them all, and in the darkness, crunch them. I think we have enough. Oh my goodness. And we got it. Well, there we go. So, uh, did I make it? Nice, okay, that's, that's the perks of having a big sink. So we have three batches of potato chips. The giant one, one that has like some other designs in it and just the standard beginner one, normal one, first one we made. So we're gonna put those into our oven for like two to four hours or until the potato chips harden. This is probably straight up like the 24 hour mark. So it's been a long one. So it's about midnight and the chips seem like that they are almost finished. But the final step before we're done is we're gonna take them out and we're gonna fry them and then we're ready to eat them. But it's pretty late right now, so I think that we're gonna leave them in here. And tomorrow morning we'll take them out, do said frying, and do also said tasting. This is taking a really long time. It's been in there for like eight hours. At 1.35. What cooks at 1.35? So it's gonna be like a 48 hour recipe. Dude, one second in the Facebook video. It just goes in, comes right out. A lot of effort. If these things don't taste good, then do not make them. It looks like a snail just trailed over your paper and left that behind. It's disgusting. <laughs> 
Okay, so it's the next morning, so we're gonna take our potato chips out of the oven and take a look at them. It doesn't look pretty, but it looks like those could be chips, especially with some additional frying. So it looks like the giant potato chip has not fully hardened in the middle. So we're gonna put it back into the oven now for a little bit longer. Let's see if we can't get it to fully harden. As for the other ones, let's take them off the baking sheet and get ready to fry them. Look at that. It's almost like gold member when he's like eating like the things from his head. They do look a little bit like ruffles. I think because the parchment paper was a little bit crinkly, they have like some natural waves to them. That's the clear potato chip dude. That's his name. You have gingerbread man and clear potato chip dude. Right there. You got the Cyclops chip here. And then not Cyclops chip. Okay. So Sophia has rejoined our cooking efforts, even though she hasn't been here the whole time. No, but I don't know what's happening. We do have these transparent potato chips right here that we can start to fry up. Keep one so you can taste what it tastes like unfried, though. Oh. Crunchy. You can hear it. It tastes like sweat. Oh! <laughs> here is the moment of truth. Are right, you ready? Put that in there. Ooh! Wow! Oh, wow, I was not expecting that. Lost a little bit of its transparency right there. It looks like a clamshell. All right, since that one turned puffy, I wanna see if I should leave it in for longer. Maybe it needs to fry through the white. These look like real potato chips. <laughs> yeah, they're not transparent, but they smell tasty. So we're gonna jump into tasting them in just a second. We have one more to fry up, which is this uh, person one, who's gonna do a high dive in. He hit the side of the pot, but he did stick the landing, and uh, it's coming out to look like a Pretty good potato chip, I gotta say. That's him upside down, actually. It's a little bit like a, like a bunny rabbit. So I'm not sure we fried these right, but before we try another frying technique, let's taste them. Cheers. All right. That tastes like a s'more. It's good. There is a marshmallow vibe to it. Yeah, I think it also kind of tastes like the very outer rim of a fried egg. Oh. Or like if you like leave any eggs behind yes. on the pan so and it, it gets like kind of burned. I'm gonna try turning down the burner just a little bit because maybe the pot's too hot. All right, let's do this. This is a less hot frying pot. All right, it's not just sizzling up immediately. Let's see, we're gonna take it out. Oh my God, that might've worked. They look good. It's interesting that the like lower temperature worked better. I feel like the theme of this video is like, cook it in a lukewarm environment. <laughs> All right, you ready? Taste test off. All right, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Clink. Clink. It's a little chewy. It's not super crunchy mm. or crispy. It kind of reminds me of a Listerine strip. You know, when you first put them in, they start to melt, and if you start to chew them, they change their mind. Yeah, I really enjoyed the like really fried ones. It tasted good, it had a good texture. This one is still salty, like it doesn't taste bad, but the texture is not very enjoyable. Before we call it quits though, we do have our giant chip, which we now know how to fry. So we are going to check in on our giant chip in like a couple of hours, but I think we've gotten to the point where we can say we've made clear potato chips. Those were definitely clear. They were definitely made out of potatoes and they were in the shape of chips. So yeah, it's a clear potato chip. Fast forwarded. And I think our clear potato chip is just about hardened in the oven. We get one shot at this. Oh, it's so fragile. It wants to break. We're losing little pieces here and there, but that's what we need to do. They're just a chip off the old block. <laughs> so what, this giant chip is like the mother chip? It's the mother chip. Oh, okay. That is our giant clear plastic potato chip. Are I we seriously eating with all that paper on there? No, we're gonna fry it though. We're basically hoping right now that the fryer will take the paper off. That's our best shot right now. We go, just, go, go for it. Wow, look at that paper. Oh, well, let's try to take it out maybe. Ooh. That is a giant potato chip. That's so questionable. Okay, let's see if we can't get the rest of the paper off now that it's all oiled up. So this is about as far as we could go. There's definitely some leftover paper on it that's just like fused together. It's like never coming off. Yeah, it's kind of like um, a shower curtain. So we're gonna salt this chip up. And with that, I'm gonna take a bite. We're yeah, gonna... we'll lady in the trampet. That is better than the other ones that looked like this. I think because it's thinner, it's got more of a crunch. Are you gonna eat the paper? I wanna try it. This is disgusting. Oh, you can't buy through the paper, huh? <laughs> Tastes about the same. So before we call it quits, I say we're gonna heat up the oil so we actually get it to that really hot temperature and make it that super fried version that tastes a lot better. Let's see how that tastes real quick. Ah! Ah! Take it out, take it out! That is not clear anymore. What is that? 
That looks amazing. It looks like a giant starfish. Okay, I'm gonna feed it right to you, Soph. Ready? We're going in. That had paper on it. <laughs> yeah, it's the paper side, shoot. Yeah, that's awesome. It tastes really good. That's awesome. So, overall, I'd say that these chips really aren't worth all the time. Their Facebook virality does not equal quality taste. That said, yeah, I would say in general, like the amount of time that it took you to actually make these versus the amount of time that was portrayed in the actual Facebook video is sort of crazy. I think it's probably like a 100 to one ratio of time. Yeah. And the flavor, probably not worth it. Although I am very proud of this giant potato chip. I wanna keep eating this. I'm not convinced if he doesn't like the paper on it. Does that look like your face is gonna stop eating because there's paper on it? I used to eat candles as a child. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is when this video goes up, we're gonna open a room on NextBeat and we're gonna take your guys' suggestions to fry different things in the wok. Could be Oreos, could be creamsicles, could be anything you guys choose and we're gonna make those with your suggestions. And even if this video didn't just go up, you can still click that link and watch our next beat room after the fact. It will still be there, it will not disappear, and you can see us fry stuff and hopefully not injure ourselves or anything or anyone else. Definitely the latter. So the link for that will be in the description below. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to smash or gently tap that like button. If you want more videos like that, make sure you smash or gently tap that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that little bell icon so you get a notification every time that we post. I'm waiting for you to say smash again. Smash. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out our next beat room, and we'll see you guys next time.